Now, the biggest thing is when you're doing drip design, but mainly for installation is where you need to be careful, um, is what ends up happening is the contractor doesn't keep it a even spacing in between. If it's every 12 inches, every 18 inches, um, they what they'll end up doing is they'll do some at one distance and then they'll do it at another distance and then they'll do it at another distance and somewhere in between. And when you get a drip system that's laid out is right here, because these drip lines are close, you're gonna have a good deal of water in these areas here. Then in this area, if you have a plant here, this plant could die because with the heavy water here, um, so you're not getting flooded, is uh, this area then becomes really dry and no water um, can move through the soil and reach this point. And so the plant hits permanent wilting point and uh, ceases to live. And um, this is where we in the industry have a problem with then drip uniformity is you don't want um, large differences in your pipe spacing when you're doing your design and installation. If it's off by a little bit, an inch or two, it's not the end of the world. But when you are significantly off, this is what then has a significant um, problem. And we see this oftentimes in the industry is um, what the contractor thinks is they will put um, a couple lines of drip around the plants and then in between the plants, they don't put any drip. Well, the problem with that that happens is then that doesn't encourage the, the roots to grow out away from where uh, the plant was planted. And uh, we see really long-term plant health decline because the water is only right where that small one gallon plant was planted and uh, the plant isn't getting any water outside of that immediate root zone. So there's no reason for that plant to then go look for water and become a much stronger plant. So even though their tendency is to want to bunch the tubing right around the plant, is that's their lack of knowledge of how drip works is um, in this instance if you're doing it right you want to have an even pattern throughout your planter bed and then properly run drip again run, drip shouldn't be run for five or ten minutes uh, drip because it has a low precip rate um, you know you you run it for a longer period of time less frequently so instead of running drip every day you might run drip three times a week for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and, and that is completely uh, normal for drip irrigation. Um, so now we're gonna move on to um, a slope scenario. Um, if you decide to do drip on slope, um, it's not as common. Typically that's where we see the overhead spray, whether it's rotor, or spray or rotators. Um, but let's say you have a client that wants to do drip on slope. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and offset it. So now I'll make it the color of my drip line. So this is gonna be my top of slope here. 
call these carrots in the industry. So this is, if you ever see a civil plan or any type of survey, um, this indicates which way that the slope is going. So the slope is the top of slopes here, and then you're going down the slope, and this is the TOA slope, the bottom of the slope. Same thing, so then, you know, if we were to look at it this way, the slope wraps around, so the homeowner would have a home here, and then their rear slope here. But, so we don't have any confusion, I'm gonna delete those. So as we're coming around the, each level here is the same elevation as we wrap. So let's see. So I guess this is a pretty big slope that I did again. Uh, let's see, 116 feet. So I am going to, uh, this is what happens when you kind of do it on the fly. So I'm gonna make this. So now we're dealing with a 17 foot tall slope. That's more reasonable. Teenage offset. Much better. We're going to trim up everything. And now this would be my drip on slope design. And so each line, it wraps around the slope at the same elevation. So if this is, let's say, six foot four off the ground, so perhaps through here, it's going to be six foot four off the ground over here. So this allows that water isn't going to then sink to the lowest part and then seep out. If we ran the drip up and down the slope, 
through gravity, when the system turned off, all the water would seep out here at the bottom and you'd have it wet. So if we we're using check valves and such on the system to properly design it, and then we have these lines, you have no low spot. Everything is at the same elevation. So the water then, um, if it seeps out of the tube, it seeps out of the tube evenly because it's equally along the slope. It's not a low spot where gravity is going to pull all the water down to. So in this instance, I know I'm going to have my PVC line. And then flush valves always go at the low spots. Again, gravity is going to, all those particles are going to, any debris is going to go to the low spot, not to the high spot. So we set those at the toa slopes, not at the top of the slope. And that would be your drip design.